Hey, what's going on everyone? It's Steggy, uh, and in today's video, I'm actually going to be talking about the Genshin Impact trading card game. I've been playing this for a while now, actually. Unfortunately, I didn't start when it came out. I had actually taken a break from Genshin, and I, like I'm just now doing the Sumeru stuff. I, I haven't even done the, the Chasm, but my kids were playing Genshin. They both play, and I was watching them play each other at the trading card game and I decided to give it a try absolutely fell in love I used to play trading card games when I was younger I used to play uh, Pokemon I was actually really good at it um, but that was many 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 years ago but it's always stuck with me and I absolutely love trading card games so ever since this came out you know I really love what they were doing with this I love the gameplay I love the style the characters I, it, I really took to it. So I've been playing it for a while, watching videos and whatnot. And in today's video, I wanted to give my personal opinion on I what five cards I think that you should automatically include in any deck. I think that these five will stick around as staples, you know, what we would call staples um, for your deck. I, when I used to play Pokemon, it was only one format. There were certain cards we would call staples. Well, when I used to play, uh, there were three big staples. We used to have Professor Oak, Computer Search, and Item Finder. And I guess technically Gust of Wind was would probably also be a fourth staple. I'd put Gust of Wind in there as well. And you would put those in your deck. Now, they would always have different qual quantities of you know how many you would choose. You don't need four Gust of Winds when you have like four item finders but that was a long time ago i just wanted to say a, you know a staple card is something that basically belongs in every deck and i'm going to talk about five of them because if you run two copies of these five that's one third of your deck is already taken up and i wanted you know people to be able to experiment and use other cards but when i make a deck i automatically include these five cards um and then you know play around with the other 20 cards I have left. So let's go ahead and get started. I will say these cards are not in any order. The only order, you know, that I'm picking is, uh, they go from left to right. So when I'm scrolling, I'm not going, I'm not scrolling a lot. So first up, what, I, I, what card I believe belongs in every deck first is the three cost Paimon. Um, it does cost three of any energy, which which makes it kind of cost costly, but you, there are a few ways to get this. You could either, you know, get three of any element, you know, three pyro, three electric. You could get uh, one omni dice and two of any element. You get two omni dice and one of any element, or even three omni dice. Now, for its cost, Paimon gives you two omni element dice. And. Some people might have been confused. I was a little confused with this as well. Initially, it Paimon doesn't change two of your existing dice into Omni dice. So if you happen to roll like a Pyro and an Electric dice, it doesn't take those and make them Omni. Paimon gives you two extra dice. So when you start your next turn after playing Paimon, you're going to have eight dice. I'm sorry. You're going to have 10 dice. You roll eight of them, and once you're done, Paimon gives you two Omni dice on top of that. So your turn is working with 10 dice, and you do that for two turns in a row. That's really good. There are a lot of decks out there, especially ones with like uh, catching, or even stuff like say Ganyu, um, where maybe you need a bit more, you know, dice. I personally am a huge fan of the Oceanid. I really like that card. And Oceanid does have a five cost ability of like five uh, hydro dice so having two extra omni dice um, really helps me with that cost you can also do more things on your turn as well you I mean you can do you can play more event cards you can play more support cards you can even just perform more attacks Paimon is just absolutely fantastic it, it for two turns for only spending three dice you're getting four omni dice back it's a really good value um, and I think she's an auto include at two into any deck. Yes, she is a bit costly, but if you sacrifice, say, a turn, maybe don't perform two attacks, maybe just one attack or do some setup, 
your next turns are going to be fantastic. Like dropping Paimon on turn one and going into your next two turns with those extra dice is is almost game changing. It's it's fantastic. So I would definitely put two Paimon into basically every deck. So next up, what I believe belongs into, you know, every deck is, of course, uh, Liban, who's probably the best card in the whole game. Liban, Liban does require some setup, especially if you want to have his effect activate at a certain time. But if you don't, you know, if it's just a nice bonus for you, then you can get his effect off, like, basically whenever. You're going to end turns with one or two dice very frequently. It's only like if you're really crunching, you know, like the numbers and you're using all your dice to the best you can possibly use for whatever reason that you're not going to be able to activate Liban. But if you have him in your deck, which you should, and you do play him, then you should keep in mind, okay, if I keep a dice, you know, left, it's going to go to Liban. Um, and then, you know, it's going to, it's going to grow. Um, he does require three, it's, it's any type, so... When you end your turn, if you only if you have two pyro left, for example, he's only going to take one of them. He's not going to take both. He only takes one dice of each element at the end of the turn. Um, if you have like one omni element and say like one dendro, he'll take both. So he'll start he'll have two. But sometimes you can drop him. If you have three different dice, end your turn. On your next turn, you're going to get two extra cards. And two extra Omni Elements. This is just like Paimon. I'm going to do this. Here we go. This is just like Paimon. But he gives you also two cards. He also costs nothing. But it does require a bit of thought. You know, in, in order to activate him. However, it's not too bad. And once you have them, have him and you're, and you're using him. He's great. Him combined with like, with Paimon. You can have a turn. That gives you two Omni Dice from Liban and two Omni Dice from Paimon. That's four extra dice on top of your eight. That's 12 dice. That is really, really, really good. Um, and it really helps with like one turn, you know, KO decks and whatnot. Or if you want to do a, like a ton of damage, this, I mean, this is how you do it. So yeah, uh, Liban definitely auto included too. He draws cards. He creates two Omni Element for basically nothing. Just some leftover dice you have. So, yeah, definitely put two in and enjoy it. Okay, next up at number three, a card that I believe belongs in every deck is the other Paimon. The, this one, the two cost Paimon that, um, that's two of any element. The two black here means two of any element. Paimon converts the dice that you use to play this card into two Omni Elements. So you're not like gaining extra ones like say, um, whoops, like you would be with, you know, Liban or this one or this Paimon. They're not extra. You're turning two bad dice into two dice that you can use for whatever you want. This, she's probably best played on turn one where maybe you can't control your dice um, that easily. Like you're not playing cards. Um, like the Jade Chamber, where the Jade Chamber can have two of your starting dice be, they match the element of whoever you're starting with. So if you're starting with like Ganyu, um, and you have Jade Chamber in play at the start of your turn, you're going to have at least two Cryo dice, which is really good. So you don't have to worry too, too much about what the other ones are. Or have stuff like the library, the Dice of Pavonius library, where you can re-roll a bit more to try to get the dice you need. Um, so on your first turn, when you have like bad stuff, if you have like really, te uh, really terrible rolls, which does happen, you know, it is RNG. It's completely random dice throws. You can have junk. This Paimon can at least make a bad situation into a somewhat good situation. And it's, you're not losing anything as well. Yes, you do minus one card because you are playing the Paimon card, but your, your dice are going to stay the same. And they're only going to get better. So I would auto include these, like this Paimon, because um, I, I just think she's she's really good, especially during your first turn. So trying to re-roll for Paimon, you know, on your first turn, I think is is the best strategy. So next up, uh, since I don't have to scroll too far, 
I'm going with strategize. I think strategize is an automatic add two to your deck. It's it's one element to get two cards. It's just good. You're gonna end your turn a lot with you know with extra dice. There might be a time where you have you know Liban in play, and maybe Liban you know has two energy, and uh, he can take one last energy. You have one one dice left. And you have you're holding strategize. I don't think I'd play it. You know, I'd rather get the two off of uh, Liban, plus the Omni. Whoops, plus the Omni dice. But I think uh, I, I think being able to just draw two cards whenever I choose to is really good. There's I mean you have Liban who draws cards. You know um, when your action phase begins. I mean which is good, right? That that is good. It is kind of like you're choosing, but it's it's not at the you have to trigger it and you have stuff like the um leeway harbor which draws two cards at the end of your turn so you you're already done acting strategize has you draw those two cards immediately that has a lot of benefits if you're looking for a certain card maybe you're looking for send off you know maybe you need to get rid of someone's summon before their next turn Maybe you need your Adeptus Temptation to be able to deal, you know, more damage for the KO. Or you need to find Lotus Flower Crisp to survive the next attack. I've, you know, I've been in these situations. Maybe you just need that extra card, a specific card, and you need it immediately. Strategize helps you find it. It helps thin your deck. It helps look for things. Um, also, if you're trying to do some elemental tuning, like say you're active... Uh, hero card is Diluc and you have enough energy to use his burst to knock somebody out but you don't have enough dice you don't have enough pyro dice but you have you know so many cards in hand but you don't have enough cards to elemental tune those well you play strategize to gain an extra card and maybe now you have all the cards you need to elemental tune because if i elemental tune strategize i'm only getting one extra fire but if i elemental if i play strategize and then elemental tune uh those two cards i'm getting two extra you know pyro for d luke so i think strategize though a flat one to draw two is really really good i do think it's really really good if you're able to if you, I mean, if you play stuff like um, NRE and you have a lot of food in your deck and you're playing Liban as well, you might you might not need Strategize to help thin your deck. But I, I think Strategize is, is something you should just automatically include two of um, and get used to playing with those two cards. I, I, I don't see any downside to this card at all. It's one of any element to draw two cards. And I know there's people out there, I've seen a lot of videos where people are like, this is this card's the best card in the game. Other people are like, this card is not as good as you think it is. Um, being able to draw cards on my turn for free, essentially not free, but for one energy, and being able to search you know, my deck a bit, I, I don't see a downside for that. I think it's just really good. So I would automatically include two strategize. I, I like it so much. I even got the, uh, you can see I got the dynamic skin for it, which is the only card I've ever gotten a dynamic skin for. As far as like, uh, you know, like an uh, an event or, or something. I have dynamic skins for, you know, the, the champion or hero people. But but for this one, yeah. Yeah, it's good. I like it. I say put two in. And that, that's what I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, so finally, the other card I think you should put two in your deck in right now in this metagame is Send Off. I think having two copies of Send Off, or at the very, very least, put just one copy in. But two copies of Send Off is almost needed. Like, there are so many cards out there that generate, uh, a, a, you know, a summon. And if we just go in the back here. This guy, the Magu Kenki, this guy summons two different summons, right? Now, I think they are going to nerf the damage he does when he summons. But he can hit you with Swirl on his first turn by himself. We don't want we don't want that. Get rid of, you know, we want to 
hit the animal guy and get rid of him. You have the Oceanid, who can summon a ton of summons. You have Coli with her summon here. Mona, the these two the the two uh, um, animal people they, they have summons for their alts. Fischl's got Oz. The Jungling's got Gooba. There's so many, so many people have summons. We can't. And Ganyu's busted summons. She's got two different ones. One off her, you know, uh, elemental burst, and one of them off of her, uh, well, skill, and then elemental burst. So. We don't want those. We don't want to be facing that stuff. We don't want to get frozen repeatedly. We don't get hit with bloom or, or you know, burning or anything like that. Vaporize, superconduct, especially at the end of the turn. Send off for two of anything. We can just pick something and just get rid of it. And that's just going to save us damage. Like, we might not be able to do as much on our turn, like if you wanted to do it more attacks or something, but we, we don't... We want to get stuff off the field. And, and especially right now where there's so many summons where everybody is summoning things. And if you're playing a deck that doesn't have summons or doesn't really use summons a lot, well, at the very least, you can use this card for elemental tuning. So, it, you know, it's not a waste per se, but ev almost everything summons something. So I would definitely put these two in. So again, just looking at everything, I mean, these are the five cards that I would probably automatically include in my deck. It, probably two copies of, except for maybe send off. You can probably get away with one, but I would I would probably do two. I think there's a lot of honorable mentions. Um, I am actually a huge fan of the Jade Chamber, but you know I probably I probably talked about Jade Chamber versus like uh, the Knights of Avonius Library in a different video. You know if you know. This, this does decent well or whatever if, if I decide to make more but um I, yeah I think I think this is probably one of the best I mean, this one's good I think Leeway Harbor is good I always do this but I think this is one of the best uh support cards in the game um and I think if, I, th I personally think it belongs in like every deck I would put it in there but I don't know if I I mean there are if you're running three elements if you're running three different elements I don't think I'd play Jade Chamber but if you're running two elements uh, which most decks are, I would play Jade Chamber, but that, I mean, that's just me and I, I could talk about that in something, a different video. Um, Catherine's not bad, um, where you could do, uh, you know, your switch is fast, but instead of Catherine, I would prefer something like, uh, Leave It To Me. I think Leave It To Me is really good and probably deserves a bit more, uh, attention because you can switch for free and heck, if you even combine this with um the ah uh, here we go the next time you perform you know switch character you spend one one less dice for no energy for zero energy uh elemental dice you could switch to a character for free if you have changing shifts and leave it to me so i think these are also really good too when you're doing a lot of pvp um i haven't lost yet is actually fantastic and you might not, you might not, you know, look at this card and think, oh, my guys never, you know, die. They never get KO'd. That's because you're probably playing against the, uh, the, uh, NPCs and you can just handle their people like no problem. But when you're playing online, you know, your guys are going to get KO'd. And this guy will give you your active person one energy. You'll get one element, one bonus element for nothing is pretty good. You know, it's like a come from behind, like, oh, well, you knocked my guy out. Well, now I'm. You know, if you strike me down, I'm going to be, you know, more powerful than you could possibly imagine. So, pretty good. I think this one's, you know, this one guy deserves to be probably in a lot of PvP decks as well. Um, I think Toss-Up's pretty good as well. I think um, Toss-Up can definitely be added. It lets you re-roll some dice. It's kind of like the Knights of Avonius Library, but it's only like a one-time thing. Um, but... I think if you're not running Knights of Avonius Library, you can run this as like a tech card, maybe like one of, because it can definitely be useful. It also costs nothing, and just being able to re-roll and try to get better dice up to two times or whatever, that's pretty good. That's not too bad. Um, I am a big fan of NRE, uh, running NRE, which costs two of anything, and then a bunch of the food, because that helps you search through your deck and whatnot. Um, but I'll probably, that could be something else I can talk about. Um, and quick knit, 
quick dick can be good for uh, if you have a lot of summons. Being able to keep them on the field for one more turn can be good. You just have to watch out for things like send off because you don't want to increase your, you know, your summons turn just to have it send off. So, but yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of stuff. Uh, Timmy, Timmy's okay. Timmy is an okay card. Uh, if you get Timmy on your first turn, he can be really solid. He gives you, um, you know, one card and one Omni element. He's like a mini Liban, um, essentially, but you don't have to really think about him. You just put him in play, and then a couple turns later, you get a bonus. He's definitely one of those cards you want to play as soon as possible. Some turns online don't last very long. You know, three rounds, four rounds, and if you don't get Timmy, you know, in those first couple rounds, he's completely useless. You can sit there on your field, and you're just going to be KO'd. Or you're going to KO them and you don't get Timmy. So Timmy's definitely one of those cards where the sooner you get him in the game, he's, he's, he's good. So I didn't include him uh, because he is situational like that. But, you know, overall, I mean, some of these, you know, support stuff are good. But this video is me rambling. I'm just rambling now. These are the five cards I think you should put in your deck, every deck you play. Try to get these first. Get Paimon. Two Paimon. Two Leben. Leben. To the other Paimon, two Strategize, and I would say two Send Off right now. I mean, you could probably do one, but there's the thing about consistency, which actually that's probably the next video I'll do is consistency, actually, because a lot of this is, is RNG. So two of them in your deck allows you, a, gives you a better chance of drawing it. So, so yeah. Anyway, that's uh, that's what I've seen so far. Um, that's my video. I just wanted to say, hey, here's the five cards I'd put in the deck. It's my opinion, but I have some experience, you know, I think it's pretty good. I think it's a pretty solid, you know, uh, suggestion and whatnot. So, well, anyway, that's enough rambling. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I might do some more Genshin videos in the future because this game's a lot of fun. Um, I hope you're having a lot of fun playing Genshin as well. Um, and that's it. Make good decisions, and I'll see you in the next one. Okay, bye.